that your code, the code you're writing is like blueprints of your application. <clears throat> they can be analyzed through um, static analysis, for, it, for example. Uh, but once your application is running and uh, deployed, um, you, it becomes a black box. So you don't have any insight of what's going on in there. Uh, a profiler like Blackfire uh, gives you um, sonic uh, glasses, let's say, uh, to, to understand, to, to be able to see what's actually going on when your application is running. So seeing within, inside the black box. And for this, <clears throat> I have this um, uh, browser extension, uh, which I installed in my Firefox. It's also available for Chrome, of course. Um, and I have this big profile button, which I'm going to click in. Of course, before I had been uh, authenticated on Blackfire website, because one of the particular things of Blackfire is that it's you can completely safely run it uh, uh, in production. And um, uh, you can run it in production because uh, I, I said that you have a... a um, PHP extension to install uh, in your uh, within PHP, and this extension will really remain completely inert uh, unless you're triggering a profile. And when you're triggering a profile, there's the small overhead that uh, will inevitably uh, happen will only occur for yourself, not and will not impact any other uh, end users. So, and another point because. Uh, uh, as you can run it in production, you need to be sure that uh, only authorized people uh, can profile you know, your application, of course. Uh, so that's why uh, you need to be authenticated to Blackfire to uh, Blackfire.io. And what it's going to do when I cl will click on profile, it will first check uh, if I am authorized to run. So here I'm running locally, but if I run uh, on a production website on blackfire.io, for instance, I will be able to profile myself, but you won't be able to do, to do so. So clicking on this uh, will trigger process here. Um, and it's very low, very slow because uh, all the resources are uh, dedicated to the um, uh, to, to the screen share sharing and uh, the video. Um, so what it's going, it's sending um, uh, ten different requests uh, to your uh, to your application in order to 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 see what's going on uh, and to average uh, the, the the different calls. So let's. Yeah, you can see here that it took, uh, in average, 1.69 seconds. Well, usually it's a bit uh, faster. Uh, we, we'll, uh, we have uh, a lot going here on my local machine. And um, so this is here, the stopwatch. Well, we call this the wall time. Uh, so the wall time here, the summary, uh, is a summary of your um, the, the, the the time spent between the very beginning and the very end uh, of your uh, application. Uh, here is the, the different uh, dimension that, and you have also different there. So this one is the input output uh, time. Uh, this is the CPU time. Uh, yeah, you can see here. So the CPU time is the actual computation time and um, input output uh, time is the time that PHP is um, <clears throat> is waiting for uh, something outside, like the file system or a network. For example, here we have a lot of um, uh, SQL queries, so it, there might be here some time spent waiting for the server to reply uh, to your SQL queries. Um, we have also the memory, the network consumed, and uh, external HTTP request and SQL queries. So that's the the, 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 the whole summary of everything. Uh, now we have two different visualization. The first one is the timeline and the second one is the call graph. So the call graph is the most um, common one. Uh, 
Uh, and I'm going to first click on the timeline to have a visual, an overview of, um, of it. Let's have it in full screen. All right. Um, let's zoom in a bit. OK. So as, as I said, this is the whole uh, profile. Um, and this, this profile is represented with a uh, time base, on the time base. So it means that here is the very beginning and there is the, the end of the request. We can see here that we have a small um, um, red triangle here, which represents uh, a marker. Uh, so here is the, um, uh, the terminate. Uh, the, the terminate event, you, you can see here the fastest GI finish request, which occurs uh, after the response has been sent to uh, the end user. <clears throat> so here, each block which are piling down uh, represents um, a PHP function that has been called. Uh, so we can see it, uh, it as, as a reverse call, uh, reverse flame graph, sorry. Uh, so the, the, the which for which the deepest we go, the more complex your uh, your application uh, is supposed to be, because uh, it's called it's calling deeper and deeper components. So we can see here that uh, simple Laravel application it has uh, already a lot of layers, many layers uh, to the application. Um, on the right. On the left, sorry, uh, you can see different metrics that uh, are um, uh, that compose your application that have been automatically um, uh, detected by Blackfire. <clears throat> so we can see here the bootstrap process, uh, the database uh, hydration, so uh, hydration of uh, eloquent models, uh, all different middlewares like. CSERF, uh, the encrypt copy, the sessions, and so on, the, the router, and so on, and so on. Uh, so all the colored ones here can be found there. And so we can have a look at uh, what's, uh, um, what's taking time to be uh, to, to, to resolve. So we can see, for example, here that the, the kernel bootstrap is quite long uh, to uh, uh, to, 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 to render, <clears throat> to execute, maybe we have something to, uh, that, that would help us uh, speed up the process. Um, and so that's pretty much it. We can filter the events. So it means that instead of showing all the blocks, we can, uh, we can uh, actually highlight the, um, uh, the colored blocks or the featured blocks. So here, all the Laravel ones. Uh, to uh, see what's going on uh, in the most important uh, components in your um, in your application. So, like here, we can see that this is uh, the threshold one. The threshold uh, means that uh, the, um, these blocks reach uh, a threshold of performance. And, uh, so it's basically Blackfire saying you mm, you might want to have a look at this one. So this is a compiled view here. <clears throat> And um, uh, we also have a blue graph in the background. So this blue graph in the background um, represents the memory, the peak memory, which is increasing over time. <clears throat> you know, this, this one that uh, once the, 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 the envelope, uh, the memory limit has been reached, uh, well, it makes your application crash because you uh, it's it's way too much memory and yeah we can see here that well it's consuming quite a lot of memory so maybe it will be interesting to understand uh, why it's doing so um so that's that's it uh, mostly for the um, for the timeline let's have a look now uh in other parts uh, other visual, visualization uh, parts. So here is the call graph view. Uh, I know it's uh, a lot. Of, it's zoomed out a bit. We'll uh, we'll zoom in uh, after a few minutes. 
Um, <clears throat> so you can see, actually visualize this call graph uh, using the different di dimensions uh, I already mentioned. So the wall time, the IO time, CPU time, memory, and so on. So let's, for example, click on the IO time. And then we can see that we have a, a different visualization uh, in um, uh, for this um, uh, uh, for this request and same for if I click on the CPU I will have a different one as well same for memory uh, and same for network so I don't have any HTTP requests but I do have SQL queries so if I click here actually I will have the details of all the SQL queries that have been run uh, in this, um, in this, within this request, um, and on the left side, <clears throat> on the left side, you have uh, all the function calls which which are sorted by uh, by default by a percentage of exclusive time. You can change this on exclusive inclusive time or the number of calls. So here, if I click here, for instance, I can see that the function are emerged have been called uh, almost 7,000 uh, times. So that's quite a lot, actually. Um, and it, it, it uh, leads me to, um, uh, to something, uh, to this notion of exclusive time uh, percentage uh, versus uh, inclusive percentage. Uh, so if I click on this one, which is, so uh, it's a carbon, uh, construction carbon time zone constructs so the dates uh, extension the daytime extension from Lara um, you can we can see that it's uh, it's on top of the list so let's hover this when we see here on the CPU uh, we can see that it consumes uh, an exclusive time of 94.1 milliseconds which is which represents six percent of the whole query um, but if I take another one, like this one as daytime, we can see that it has an exclusive time of 31.8 milliseconds, but an inclusive one of 563 milliseconds. So that's huge, actually. So what's the difference? What's the difference between inclusive and exclusive? Well, the inclusive time represents the time spent within that function and uh, uh, included all the subsequent calls, all the calls that are below. So if I zoom in uh, this, fun uh, this function, so we can see that it's being called on, on a model, on an eloquent, on an eloquent uh, model. Uh, so the time here, the inclusive time, represents the time spent here, so on the, no the, the node representing this function, and all the nodes below. We have quite a few with a lot of, call, of function calls. That's a cardinality with it, which is very high. The exclusive time though, uh, so back on the carbon one, represents the, the time spent only in this function. So uh, if I take this, uh, this one again, I, the, the, this function spent um, exclusively 31.8 milliseconds. So uh, only for this function, and the uh, the inclusive is for uh, for all uh, the also in, uh, adding the subsequent calls. So this gives us um, a hot path actually. So having a look at the um, the main wall time, I will reset this. You can see that uh, just seeing the colors, following the colors which are fading. Um, it, it represents the inclusive time, and you will see that in all different dimensions. <clears throat> so having a look, let's zoom a bit. We can follow this hot path, right? Uh, so each node here represents a function call, or here um, a group of function calls there, because it's all in the pipeline. Um, we can follow this I, as uh, following the right rabbit to see what's going on from top to bottom until sometimes this kind of nodes, which presents 
a dark background. So this dark background versus the uh, the dark uh, border represents actually the um, the exclusive time. So the most intense nodes. So we can see that it comes from different PDO statements. <clears throat> so P, uh, so SQL queries by basically. Uh, okay, so that's the first uh, the first uh, lead, the first clue uh, to, for our investigation. Um, we also have the same. Oh no, we didn't have ones for uh, uh, for the CPU time, but uh, we could still follow uh, the the lead, and we could see that actually uh, it's coming uh, from the. Uh, comment as date time because uh, the carbon is uh, library is called below <clears throat> and who is calling this it's coming from a comment uh, model coming from a relation right so we have uh, it, we might have actually an n plus one issue there uh, and where it's coming from we can see here so that's from our code right but uh, it's uh, it's being called by this um, this node and coming from this view. So that's interesting. Uh, if I click here, I have the details on the left. Uh, it's coming from our user activity helper, uh, countries and comments or user. Okay, just keep it in mind uh, for uh, uh, a few minutes as I uh, going you through uh, another. Um, the tour of the, the UI. So we have found something here. Um, but first, uh, before checking to the code, I wanted to show you this panel. So this panel gives us uh, meta information uh, of uh, our application, of the page we, we, we've been uh, profiling. And this, the, the, the most important is on the right um, with the cache information we can uh, uh, have a, an insight of uh, the level of cache that we have here for upcache, which, well, that's good news. It's uh, activated. It's good. Well, it's, we're uh, not using it uh, as a whole. Uh, the unturned string buffer, which is very important to have a look at, because it's keeping all the strings used by our application to reuse them. Uh, so if you uh, reach the six megabytes you you really want to keep an eye on it in order to them to give uh, uh, enough space the different accelerated path files the apcu memory the real path cache and the pcr cache on the left we have uh, all the meta information about the probe version and the agent version so this is for blackfire the runtime so sometimes uh, you expect to uh, to have the appropriate version of php but sometimes in, in, uh, it's not what you expect. So it's good to have it here. Uh, DOS, the number of samples. So the, the number the samples are the different um, requests that we sent uh, to the application um, in order to, you know, to average the measurements. Um, and here, oh, I have something interesting because uh, I forgot to disable xdebug. So, Imagine that uh, happen, uh, this happens in production. Well, you have you will have this big warning here. Okay, so maybe I can disable the <coughs> uh, X debug. Um, notice here the different um, the different tabs here. So we have a very useful one, which is recommendations, and we have uh, so for all paying plans we have this these recommendations, and we can see that we have a few about Laravel. Uh, oh, yeah, Laravel configuration should be cached because we're assuming that we're in production here. So it means that we forgot to run this config cache uh, artisan command. Mm, let's click on this. And clicking on, uh, you will have this uh, um, uh, documentation, small documentation on how to fix this, uh, this problem that Blackfire has detected. Um, okay, this one is very easy. We just need to run uh, config cache. And same for the routes or the number of ORM entities. So here we are using um, Lara, uh, the, the eloquent entities. <clears throat> we have also this here. Uh, so we have a two, way too many entities. 
so yeah, we have now this very important clue about uh, about the number of entities. So it it kind of confirm this n plus one that we have. So now let's have a look at uh, this problem that we found about the user activity helper counts recent comments for user, uh, which have been called by this view from this user activity text uh, helper. So back now to the code. <clears throat> so the user activity text was uh, in here, activity helper. So I need to zoom. Not sure. Okay, I cannot zoom here. Anyway, no. Okay. Uh, let's switch to full to presentation mode then. Okay. Now I guess uh, it's much better for everyone. <clears throat> Uh, so this uh, activity help helper gets user activity text. So it's getting the the, the a user. Uh, so maybe it's uh, worth uh, opening the. Um, it's worth opening. The template. So. It's the citing one. I need to leave this. All right, so let's go to the sighting controller. It's a sighting view. Okay, now I have it. Okay. <clears throat> so this one, uh, we are looping uh, uh, over the comments and we're calling the um, user activity helper. Well, my application is really slow. The user activity text. Okay, it's here. So we, um, for each and every comment from the uh, the article, which we call uh, a citing, we're calling we're calling this helper on the uh, passing the owner of the comment. So. <clears throat> That's why we have a user here. So we will we want to count the the, the recent comments for this user, um, and based on this count, we will give it um, um, like a, a, a user activity text, so like a badge somehow. So <clears throat> the more uh, they have comments, the more uh, the the difference uh, we will have. Uh, uh, as a user activity text. And if I have a look at this function, actually, yes, uh, we call the different comments from the user. So uh, we are lazy loading actually the, 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 this uh, property. We're loading every comment uh, object. Uh, and if um, the, 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 the creation date is uh, um, within the last three months, then we count it. So that's a very bad uh, counting uh, algorithm. So let's, uh, um, let's change this to uh, a more reasonable uh, way of counting. Um, so I'm just copy pasting here. Uh, so basically I will um i will here um filter uh, filter out uh with the uh the owner id and do a basic count right uh, i have a lot of different noises here <laughs> okay um so now i have fixed uh my my code so i 
uh, I, I definitely had a, a, a N plus one problem. Now I'm just counting uh, regularly, do a, a basic count instead of loading the whole um, the, the, the whole lot of uh, comments uh, uh, attached to this uh, to this citing. So now I have saved, and I will want to. Uh, to profile again so that I can see what's going on. First, well, I tested, I have no regression in terms of, uh, um, uh, in terms of um, features. So now I'm gonna profile again. <clears throat> Let's hope that it's not eating all my resources from my computer. I know that I'm doing this live, but <clears throat> remember uh, we have uh, like one point something uh, seconds. It seems that we, uh, we had uh, we did a good job here. Uh, well, I can have a look first at the call graph and see. Um, maybe having a look uh, here. And we can see that, yes we now have accounts instead. 